Matt A. Ching Yu on stage, Tiffany Ching Yu Wong, and Matthew, Matt McClary, who are currently sharing their screen. Uh, hey, hey. It's like being on stage. Hello, Matt. Hello, Tiffany. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Glad to have you uh, both here. Uh, thank you for it's managing. Early. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for, for managing for time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, thank you for making the time. So, uh, yeah, it seems you have a you have a really uh, smart uh, and stream framework for API launch. And actually, a lot of companies are asking themselves the question: How we go from SaaS to API? So, we are glad to have you for this talk from enterprise size SaaS to self service APIs, the stream framework for API launch. Right, and it will be a joint talk, right, with the two experts on the topic. So, uh, yeah, Tiffany and Matt, the stage is yours for 25 minutes. I invite you Thank to you share right. your screen. I don't. Yeah. I got it. All right, first. thanks, Mehdi. Um, everyone can see. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what we're here to talk about. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. My name is Matt McClarty. I'm the global leader of API strategy for MuleSoft, uh, and I'm really happy to be co-presenting with Tiffany, who is the Chief Strategy Officer from Spectrum Labs. This is really Tiffany's story. I just want to say a few opening words. I think I think that um, uh, just, I love the API Days event series, uh, always bringing new ideas, new thoughts, and, and covering new dimensions of the multi-dimensional API space. Uh, I, I'm really excited about this story uh, because uh, we're going to tell the story of how you, you know, can move from a SaaS based product to expand and extend through self serve APIs. Uh, what I think what's really interesting about this story as well is, is what Spectrum is doing, which is taking AI based uh, machine learning based models uh, to to do good in the tech technology landscape to, um, you know, Tiffany will give you more detail, but really to to help make the, the web a better place. I'll just put it that way. So but you know, this is really a story about um, looking at APIs as products. And API products are something we've been talking about for a long time. I have a slide that's actually a whole series of headlines on API as a product, but here's just one of them. You know, it's always a hot topic when, we, when, we're, when we're looking at APIs from a business perspective, how do you manage APIs as products? And I think when we say API product, it kind of brings to mind something like, uh, an API product company. We've seen Plaid this year as a banking platform uh, be acquired by Visa for $5.3 billion. We might think of Twilio as a company who's now gone from being a more than billion dollar unicorn uh, you know, publicly traded company to now acquiring companies for billions of dollars. And this is a company that was built all on an API product. So there's certainly opportunity there to have monetized standalone API products and even build a company around them. But there's a there's many more paths to API products than just, just that startup route. So it could be a standalone API product, but there's lots of other ways. Um, a pretty common one is APIs could be used for an established company as a new indirect digital channel, either for customization or you know, extending to new, new customer segments through new channels. It's pretty common to just complement the products you already have. We've seen examples of companies as they get more mature digitally uh, create value added services through APIs. Um, thinking about companies like MasterCard, uh, where, where in BMW who have taken data that's been consumed digitally and turned that into analyzed value added offerings for their customers. Uh, industry alignment might be the path into an API product if you need to you know, coexist in a healthcare setting with like HL7 or, or if you have open banking is really popular, obviously that's a big one in, in the UK and in Europe, right? Where you've got mandatory uh, open banking, that could be the way in. Might be that you just want a strategic objective like Netflix creating an API in order to get ubiquity on streaming platforms. And then there's examples uh, around using APIs as, as a scaling mechanism. If you've got a set of customers and you want to kind of bring mass market to that, We've seen companies like StubHub uh, use their API to work with a network of ticket brokers beyond just you know some of the 
some of the leagues and venues they were working with. And that's this is one of the aspects we're going to talk about a fair amount. Now, specifically for SaaS companies moving to APIs, um, there's some great starting points. There's a really good foundation there. SaaS companies are generally web native companies. So that helps when you're moving into API product space. SaaS companies are typically data-driven organizations using that to inform their strategy and adjust accordingly. And because of those factors, there's probably brand permission for a SaaS company to move or extend into the API space from what they're doing today. But it's not all a paved road for SaaS companies. There's also, you know, you might, even though SaaS itself is, is a multi-tenant model, there tends to be more white glove treatment to the different tenants on the platform, maybe some specific customizations. When you move to a shared API approach, you need to normalize even further. Um, SaaS is also typically geared towards human users. And so it's a different game when you're, when you're uh, exposing APIs to developers. And finally, in SaaS, because you're going all the way up to the UI, you can kind of vary the boundaries. Whereas in the API space, you are you have a hard network boundary that you need to uh, enforce with uh, the developers you're working with. And But despite all that, we've seen great examples of SaaS to API. As MuleSoft guy, I'm uh, you know part of Salesforce. Salesforce story is that as much as Salesforce is viewed as the original SaaS company, they're also the original API company because APIs were needed to provide that indirect channel to provide developer access, customization, for Salesforce's customers for integration purposes and coexistence. And in fact, Salesforce, you know, is supporting like every backward, every backdated version of their, their API, something they've chosen to do. Um, SurveyMonkey is a SaaS company who's, you know, we may all know SurveyMonkey from going out and filling online surveys that pop in our inbox, uh, but they have a B2B business model where they're providing additional services to enterprises. And they've taken all the data they collect from surveys and, and added on some value added data uh, derived services. But the real story that we wanna talk is to following that scaling mechanism path. And, and at this point, uh, I'm just gonna hand it over to Tiffany to tell the story of Spectrum Labs and their journey from being an enterprise geared SaaS based company to getting an API product in the market. Thank you, Matt. All right, I will take over the screen. It's the little red, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Awesome. So thank you very much, Matt. Um, really um, for setting up the bigger picture and uh, the context for from SaaS to API. I think um, I cannot get better um, then Matt, uh, really from uh, MuSoft, a Salesforce company, to set the stage. So let's dive in um, the Spectrum uh, case. So, so who is Spectrum and uh, who am I? So I'm the Chief Strategy Officer for Spectrum Labs. And in this context, um, I run the API business. And that means really take um, the API business from the scratch uh, for our growth. So Spectrum Lab um, offer the online trust and the safety infrastructure for digital platforms. So we uh, use AI to identify um, disruptive behaviors from sexual harassment to child grooming and all the way to the weapon trafficking. We also have this workflow called a guardian to um, kind of increase the human moderator's productivity. And since the inception, we have rich data to really achieve the high performance and keep over 1 billion users safe um, by, uh, you know, through working with our customers and the partners. And you can see the verticals we focus on here, right? And then it is the gaming industry like Riot, date, uh, dating industry like Tinder and Hinge, um, and social um, uh, platform like Pinterest. So on top of my mind is, you know, what's next and how we grow? Um, of course, we uh, started this nonprofit alliance uh, called Oasis Consortium to drive industry standards. We you know branch into the voice chat from text. Um, API has been always on my mind because I believe um, it's important to open our platform for em emerging companies uh, beyond the leading platforms we have been working with. So um, self-serve API is the gateway and answer. Now, um, when I first 
need, when I first needed to start the API business, and I was saying, hey, where to start? And I searched um, uh, online, talked with many people. What I found out is the story about API first companies like Stripe and Twilio really set a blueprint of the API first businesses. However, it is less written about if you already have a successful enterprise SaaS model and you want to grow with the API. And this is why actually we are here today having this talk. And if you are and you will be in the same boat as I was, and I think you are coming to the right session. So to start with, really, I bucket the pitfalls into three groups. Um, the first is the misalignment. Um, just, just think that um, you are really trying to um, do something new and with a group of folks already succeed with an existing playbook. So how you bring those people along against their inertia of doing the current thing, it is a big bucket of pitfall you will encounter. And the competing goals, not only you're competing with the existing business, you also potentially have different goals um, using API to grow. That could be going to down market, new verticals, it could be lead gen for your existing business, or it could be just building a data mode. All these goals could have different single use case when you, to de when you develop the API. And the last, what made you successful for your enterprise SaaS could be a roadblock. You know, you have to identify if there are conflicting um, unique value propositions there, right? So those are the three bigger buckets of the pitfalls you would encounter if you want to launch an API business from the enterprise SaaS model. Now, so how to solve it? So that's why uh, we designed this process called um, the stream process. You know, strategize, strategize from the beginning, team up, review, engineer, affirm, and machineize, and we will talk um, each step uh, in details. But the goal is to use this potentially repeatable and scalable process for you if you're at a point to launch an API business um, uh, within your company. Great, so let's talk about strategies. Um, so to start with, uh, we had to recognize and embrace that we are not entering into a green field. Um, you have an ongoing business with its own cost structure and a revenue model. And that means you have a profit margin level that you don't really want to cannibalize because remember, you want to bring your team along, bring the company along to do that. So taking into consideration the cost revenue is important. You have to lay your link canvas doing API over your existing canvas. Identify what is the current unique value prop of your current business and how can that help you and how can that block you? And what are, are the customer segments that you are not addressing now, but you can actually help grow with? And can you identify additional problem set instead of a complete different problem set? The key reason that you have to build a link canvas within the link canvas is that we are building a sidecar and it has been has to be in sync with the main engine to bring more passengers. Otherwise, you might end up with cannibalizing your business and not actually getting the key stakeholders along with you. So um, I I often joke with my team that it's just like dancing with the handcuffs. So. With that, as we mentioned, um, really like you will encounter many pitfalls, therefore there will be misalignment. It's very important to team up with the key stakeholders. And here you see the key stakeholders which mattered to me when I launched API business. And this is the order that mattered to me. So because you have competing goals with the existing business, you have to have your CEO and the CTO report constantly for you to gather resources. So very often people forget about have regular checking and give feedback and get more resources. The more resources you have and alignment you have, the better you can you stand a chance to succeed in this new business. And because we're building a new technical capability, talk with your engineering, data science and product right away because you want to find out which part of your current product actually can be reused rather than what part of your current infrastructure could be a roadblock. If you find something can be reused, it can really actually increase velocity to go to market. 
for you to buy in time to develop the new features that API needs. And next, I will say is the marketing. You know, tap into the current CRM to see, are there actually leads which was disqualified? Are there opportunities we lost? And are there current lead gen which are stuck? Because those could be your potential uh, pipeline for your pilots. The earlier you can drive pilots, the better chance you can actually develop an API that people want and drive growth for your company. And the last, if you potentially want to use that for a lead gen, make sure you bring your A's and video are along with you from start. They can be fly on the wall, but API could be very unfamiliar with enterprise SaaS sales. And if they don't really understand the concept and don't feel part of it in the beginning, it will be too late when you have the whole plan and transfer to them. So people before business is very important to drive the alignment. And now I want to use this, um, this slide to, of course, give the credit to Amancio and Andrew who wrote API product management. I think this value proposition interface canvas is very, very useful when I actually reviewed our technical capabilities to develop API. Of course, as a business person, you need to understand the kings, uh, gains and the pains for the persona you're talking with and their processes and jobs to be done. But especially important when you have an existing enterprise software solution, just digging to actually what is the current data sources, um, the applications, business process, and what can be reused and what could be the gaps. And what helps enterprise SaaS to succeed actually might be a roadblock for you. So in our cases, for example, so we uh, really have above industry performance accuracy when we deliver, for example, sexual harassment models to our customers. But because we are vertical and customer focused, there is this very scalable retraining and the data labeling process embedded. And this is not necessarily the thing you want to do when you actually want to have an off-shelf API to the market when you test it, isn't it? So the first thing is talking with the data science and engineering team. We found out the four top performers that have been the, long, the most long lasting that we can use off the shelf as that you actually can drive the velocity to test the market. And then that will buy you um, the time to de develop the backend infrastructures needed for the API and the new features. So really use this step to talk with your engineers to find out the gaps and potentially the things you can use. And a move on. So as we said that, hey, you know, great, we know the gaps, we know what can be reused. Now it's very important to actually drive what I call an early access program. So I kick that off right away once I identify what can be reused and what potentially the hypothesis of the gaps that I see there. And what I did is picked the seven pilots based on what current CRM or the folks I know. And they actually cross from the small to mid to, uh, to the large cap. And then I put the single key use case, my hypothesis to them say, hey, I think sexual harassment, the insult, the threat, the bullying are important. Um, you know, really the 80 20 rule, right? Those four models, uh, you know, amount of 40 models we run, I think that is actually addressed the most the hot topics, especially for emerging uh, platforms and test that out across those different segments. We got back with that, hey, you know, small and the both small and the big caps say, I actually want to have the bot for actionability to stream the data that you return to us from your model. Um, and the, the smaller platforms say, hey, I actually want some you know, analytics to understand how my community and the platforms perform. So those are the new features people come up with. But at the same time, I realize, of course, on the back end, you need to have scalable credentialing, right? When you're going to the wild west, but you also, for example, need API instance because you don't want actually vertical agnostic data to impact your industry folks, the data, right? You don't want to actually impact to in to the, 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 the impact, um, you know, negatively, um, you know, cost issues with your current business. So, so I think to solve that problem and to prioritize that, I want to quote, you know, can, I will call him, a, call him a mentor when I first started this business, um, is already the CTO from Usoft. And he said something that I really take away, uh, you know, and use like in everyday implementation is make the trivial manifest. What that means is in my implementation is to give your engineers and data science team the problem, not the solution, and tell them, hey, I don't want to add you the new data impact my existing performance. What should I do? Oh, well, like API instance, we can we can spin that off 
quite easily. Oh, by the way, instead of telling them build an analytics board, telling them, hey, my sm smaller platforms do not actually have engineering capacity to actually aggregate the, the data and don't really have the knowledge about how to build a community house. How can I help them using our knowledge and capabilities to really make use of the data we give back to them? Oh, you know, it's very easy. It's already on a roadmap. We can just spin an easy version for them. Right. So give the give the problem, not the solution and make it very, very clear, uh, clearly manifested, make it very small and trivial is the way to success because you are competing for your engineering resources in your team, which I would say the most expensive resource. Well, at this point, you have uncovered enough unknown unknowns. You know, actually, potentially product features, the priority, um, the segments, who can pay more versus not. And then that moment you make a decision because you cannot remember run full goals, new vertical stock market data at the same time. Pick one which makes most economic sense and technical sense based on what you have right now and, and run it and iterate it. So now make a decision on a product roadmap bring all the tech and product team, marketing team, you know, have the messaging for it. Very important, I would say, have a price in the packaging a baseline because if people are not willing to pay, that just means it's not valuable enough. Put a number there based on all the feedback you've get, uh, gotten and run that together with the technical pilots. So next stop is to validate those known unknowns. Well, so the next step is really, really to iterate it, you know, from the pre-integration to sandbox to production. I think here, what you will have the slides and you have details here. The only key thing I want to mention here is to set metrics. How long did that take from the initial visit, sign up to build the first, you know, app and really have the production and the usage on it. Because when you understand when, where people got stuck and where actually people have the velocity of conversion, you know where to focus on. And then that's been out of the insights back into the beginning of the loop of strategize. And then you see the real process of stream is turning and the spinning and help you uh, in agile way to um, take your API business off the ground. So I will end up on uh, this slide. Really, the stream process is a process built for anybody who has been or will be uh, or are in my current um, uh, you know, situation where like, you have to build a new business unit within a successful business model. And stream is the way for you to solve the three biggest buckets um, of the pitfalls you might encounter. So on that note, really thank you for your time. I think Matt and I will uh, open for the questions. Yeah, hello. Thank you very much for uh, for this. So we have a few minutes for, for, for questions. The first question is really about, uh, you talk about cannibalization, right, uh, from potential SaaS to API. How do we identify the fact that people will not be able to reproduce your SaaS and compete with your SaaS with the API you provide? And how do you ensure that then that APIs are new, new channels actually for your company? Um, Matt, Matt, I saw you say something. Yeah, I, I think it's a, I mean, I think it's a big challenge. I, I think I would say that the, that would be something to factor into the stream iterative process of, of reevaluation. I think we've seen examples, right? Many where APIs are, um, it, you want to avoid the situation where you put an API out there, somebody comes over the top, owns the customer relationship and, uh, and, and basically kind of constricts your business. Twitter, Twitter is the example of the, you know, controlling the ecosystem where they're always making changes to the API to, to wipe out anyone who would try and <laughs> try and take their business. So I think it's just something to, I think it's a good point. When Tiffany mentioned factoring in the uh, the measurements and metrics, it's a good thing to look at you know, how can you get visibility into the customers that are using uh, the, the the other channel and, and to make sure that you're not losing customers to people using the channel. I think Tiffany, in your case, um, you're really going from you're you're providing the value added service directly to the customers you're working with. So it's a little different, Medi, than the than the traditional API model where you might be, you know, indirectly reaching customers. 
like in, in, in the case of Spectrum, they're providing this content moderation service. And so, you know, I, I think that it, it, maybe it's possible somebody would just become a thin proxy and try and steal the business. But as long as you have the right metrics in place, that's going to help you protect against that possibility. Yeah. And Matt is also like, you know, to to add to what Matt said was you would know, right? Like if you if you're very close with your sales leader and a marketing leader, you can easily actually pull out your CRM. You know what are the opportunities you are missing, right? And you know, for example, in our case, um, the personas that we have been traditionally dealing with are the operations folks, right? You can think about they report to potentially the COO and the CMO, right? Um, but you know, with this whole uh, moving to an API eats the world, a uh, world that the developers have a say there, right? So, so there, there's so even you are in the bigger enterprise sell process, you potentially missed opportunity when the decision maker is a developer not mentioning you potentially have segments right like in our case the large cap right the leading platforms i mentioned are our main focus when we started off um, um but you also think about a lot of like a mid cap like emerging you know uh, like emerging like two three years old they actually need a solution more than others so so you would know if you're very close to the sales team that's why um if you look at a process the team up side is very important not only just to have the stakeholders but for you to really understand how you not to cannibalize the, um, the business and the last thing i will add is remember the lean canvas i highlight the cost and revenue structure so cannibalize not only means that um, you take existing business away but also means that um, you can offer the growth which could offer the higher margin if possible yeah because uh, uh one last question here but uh uh, we received a speaker in, our, in past API days conferences who actually were trying to do APIs to SaaS. And actually he was telling the story that was a fail for him. He was a Twilio competitor, uh, right? And he was saying that, hey, we had a new GPI adoption. We wanted to do a SaaS with UI and an application and actually it never worked, uh, right? So it's, it was great to see the other story from, from SaaS to API. But also on the other side, the question would be, uh, uh, like, how do you, how do you stop uh, developing into uh, the SaaS features by, uh, um, and, and let's say, considering that you are opening like new API features? How do you make the right balance between what you open in API and what you, what you keep like for the SaaS version? Because at some point, if everything is in the API, I will, I will do my own SaaS for my own, uh, uh, as a customer, I will do my own SaaS that fit my needs, right? And you may lose your SaaS subscription. So how do you manage that? Um, like I was quite relentless um, when I started business to to start this, which is called I call it early access program, right? You know, um, I you know I told my team that really, really, really root your your strategy and the plan in the brutal truth, the earliest possible. Um, so what we did is we we launched um, this program with like seven pilots, right? And then you will know exactly uh, what you know, they want what they don't want. And in my meeting, I usually very blunt, right? This is early program. Tell me how much you're willing to pay, right? What is your budget? If you're emerging, what is your runway? Um, and, 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 and Maddie, I tell you that if you ask those blunt questions about your willingness to pay and how many engineers you have, you know, you know, can I actually help you to build yourself? If you ask those blunt questions very quickly, you will know, um, what is the single use case for each segment just by how big they are and how painful it is for them and how many engineering resources they have, y you, you well know. So run the pilots as soon as possible. Um, and then asking the blunt question, you cannot run, you cannot do this business as the traditional the SaaS sales playbook and wait for five meetings to figure these things out. You have to ask in the first meeting. Yeah, thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Matt. We are uh out of time here but it was great to have uh, to have this now so now in the api day story we have these api to SaaS talks and now we have this SaaS to api thanks to both of you thank you very much uh, thank